next. Uh, my name is Paul Peterson. I graduated from East Peoria High School this year. So I'm gonna be talking about how much screen time is okay for uh, kids. Um, an effort to help families guide kids' media use groups such as the American Academy of Pediatrics and the World Health Organization have released numerical screen limit guidelines, but in reality is that there really no magical number that's just right. What's more important is the quality of kids' media. So a difference of quality is like something that's educational compared to something that is just like have for fun, like in entertainment, such as like Jake Paul, which is not really good quality for your kids to watch a lot of it. So when looking at screen time, you should see how it fits into your family's lifestyle and how you engage your kids with it. Next slide. Uh, so um, for kids under 18 months, uh, they should have uh, zero hours of screen time. 18 months to 24 months, uh, they should have little to no screen time. Uh, preschoolers, uh, three to five, have should have around up to an hour of screen time. Elementary school age, six to 10, is up to one to one and a half hours. Uh, middle school age is up to two hours, and high school age, you discuss as a family what you believe is the best amount for them. Next slide. Uh, so the reason that you should uh, look at screen time is because it can lead to a lot of problems according to the Mayo Clinic. Uh, these problems can include obesity, irregular sleep schedules, lack of sleep, loss of social skills, violence, and unproductivity. Um, you should also limit your screen time before your uh, bedtime because it can lead to uh, problems going to sleep because of the blue light. And you should keep electronics out of the bedroom and charge phone in another room while you're sleeping to, in order to avoid um, getting distracted before you go to bed by your phone. Next slide. So I am Kate Miller. I am the assistant STEM um, summer educator and I did 4-H and the teen teachers and the tech changers for about five years before I did that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a contract and agreement. Um, so we encourage to kind of have families, especially for those older age, like the teen age, late middle school, early high school, um, to work together and create kind of a contract or agreement between the parents and the teenagers to kind of help just lay out the rules between both parties when dealing with social media or um, any really time, like anything that you really do on the internet. Um, when you're making this contract, uh, we find that it's kind of, it's help, more helpful to have the kids create their own rules because um, in that way they'll follow them better and um, that they can see it as, oh, we made these rules, so um, we're going to follow them. And it's just more like they come up with stuff that um, they think they view as fair as well. Um, we encourage to make the rules positive and avoid using words as um, negative words like no or don't. Um, more focus on like the times that um, they are allowed to do stuff. So the next slide um, shows some examples that you can add into your contract. Um, an example is making designated areas in your house a technology-free zone, such as a dinner table or any really kind of family space, um, and just make this rule for everyone. Um, another example is using, um, is to tell the times that they are allowed to go on, like play video games or be on their phone. Um, it's better to just kind of focus on the positives of it. So I have an example of that you can play video games after schoolwork and chores are completed. Um, also focus on how you want them to use social media, um, kind of focusing on um, you, the respect aspect of um, being involved in online communication. 
Um, so I have an example, uh, you will only use uh, respectful conversations with nice words while on Xbox, you, know, you can have free time um, on the iPad after dinner on school nights. Again, focusing on those times when they are able to use their technology. Uh, we'll be open with each other um, about what you are doing on the internet. We'll ask permission before downloading or buying apps. Um, we'll use the internet for good and we'll only speak kindness and pro uh, promise to report any bullying or inappropriate messages immediately. Again, just kind of laying down the open communication. Um, so the next slide is also another example of a family media agreement, agreement from, this is from Common Sense Media, which is a great website that has lots of resources of um, examples of these types of contracts. Um, this one is kind of a uh, layout of like all media. Um, they do have ones that are um, more specified uh, or like just social media or something like that. Um, so this one's just like a checkbox one. And again, it's available on their website that you can print them off. Um, on the next slide, I also linked some other um, great resources for making like, an agreement. Um, again, there's that family media agreement. There's also one for screen time. And then there's also another one for strictly that's just social media and talking about what you guys agree on, um, your family agrees on what is okay to post on social media and kind of an agreement to have like that open communication about sharing passwords and stuff like that. Um, it's helpful to really just discuss and um, also like what the consequences are if the uh, contract is broken or not fo or followed. Um, we really encourage to um, designate kind of a check-in time for these contracts to be discussed and um, it should be an open discussion so both parties should agree on the contract and to follow the agreement. So sticking with things that you can do during quarantine, a big thing right now is finding activities that you can do away from a screen because it seems very easy to just sit and on your technology and find things to do. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Mara Dimitrov. I just graduated from East Peoria Community High School. So I have a list of ideas of things that you can do away from the screen to keep you more involved as a family. Next slide. So the first thing you can do together is cook a meal. The University of Illinois Extension's Eat, Move, Save program has a variety of healthy recipes. So you can look through on this link, it has a whole bunch of different recipes so you can see what you have in your house versus the recipes and find one that works for you. There's also another option. There's a lot of subscription boxes, but I know that Paul has experience with one called Blue Apron. And so then you don't have to worry about what you have in your house when choosing recipes. And you also don't have to worry about going to the stores and having to find things for these recipes because they send you the recipe and all of the ingredients. Next slide. Another thing that you can do right now is you can go for a walk or a bike ride. The Peoria Park District has a variety of different trails with different accessory levels. They have gravel, natural surfaces, and paved trails for different types of hiking or bike riding. Um, there's also different resources for activities. Next slide. This is also a good time to read more. It's always a good source of entertainment away from the technology. So you can read books or get one. The Peoria Public Library is currently closed, but they do curbside pickup. And the Dunlap Library also does curbside pickup. They also have great online resources. One that I use a lot is called Libby. It has audiobooks and eBooks. So even though it's on the technology, it's that good media where you're learning while you're using your technology. Next slide. Another thing that you can do is you can pull out board games and play them. I know that it seems really simple, but right now is a good time to do some good old fashioned family bonding with lots of different board games or puzzles. You can just leave them out and do them when you have time or just walk away when you have something to do. Next slide. So now we're gonna look at uh, parental controls that you can put on your kids' phones. Um, so one of the big things is app filtering. So app filtering on apps, 
on your phone is it filters bad and objectable apps and protects against apps that are meant to just steal your data. Um, then there's also time management that sets time limits for certain apps such as like uh, social media or like Fortnite or stuff like that. And then there's ones that just do overall screen time. Uh, web filters, filters out bad websites, uh, just like a school or a business would do. Uh, location tracking is, uh, it tracks where your kids are so you can see where your kids are at all times. And then geofencing is where you get alerts if your kids go on into a designated area uh, personally. So like, let's say if you have like, uh, if, if you wanna see, if you wanna get a notification that your kids are at school, when your kids go into that area that you designate, you'll get alerts saying, hey, they were at school. You can also use this to block out areas you don't want your kids to go into. Uh, and then there's text monitoring, which gets alerts about certain type of messages and see what your kids are texting about and who they are texting with. Next slide. So here's an overall chart of the different uh, things that each app can do. I'm gonna go over each one specifically. On the far right, we have the cost, and then I'll go over which each app is able to do. All right, next slide. Uh, so Net Nanny um, parental controls. It has app filtering. It can do time management, web filters, location tracking. It can do geofencing, but it has no text monitoring. It costs fifty four ninety nine a year. Next slide. Uh, Norton Family. Um, you can all, with this deal, you also get uh, their uh, virus protection. Uh, so uh, for ad filtering, it's Android only. So for um, if uh, some apps can do it on iOS, but it's not as good as it is on Android. So that's why some apps will be Android only. And if they can do it on iOS, it, will, it won't be as good. Uh, time management is also on Android only. Uh, web filtering can be done on both, same for location tracking and geofencing, and it can also do text monitoring. It costs $49.99 a year. Uh, so Circle, which is provided by Disney, which a lot of people are familiar with, um, it can do app filtering, time management, web filtering, location tracking, geo. it cannot do geofencing or text monitoring, and it costs $129 a year. Um, next one. Uh, Custodio, uh, it does app filtering, time management, web filter, uh, web filtering, um, location tracking, uh, geofencing, and it does text monitoring for Android only, and it costs 87 26 a year. Uh, next slide. Uh, so our pack does app filtering, uh, time management, uh, web filtering uh, is limited, uh, and then it does location tracking, geofencing, and does not do text monitoring. And it's cost, it has different uh, tiers that you can subscribe to a month. It's anywhere from zero to six nine nine a month. And then uh, the last slide is screen time, uh, which will be, and which is Android only uh, for app filtering. It does time management. It, does web filtering on Android only, and it does not do location tracking, geofencing, or text monitoring, and it's free to use. We can go back, if you guys have questions about this, we can go back and look at the chart. Next slide. Uh, so when you're looking at softwares, you should check to see if the so software is available on your device as well. Uh, and on your kids because both Android and iOS offer some monitoring tools and some internet and phone providers also provide tools to assist with controlling access and setting limits and also uh, text monitoring. Right. Do you guys have any questions I believe? If you guys have questions, you can unmute yourself and you can ask them or just text them into the chat. Will we get a copy of the slides? I like to take notes, but I know I've missed a lot. There's a lot of good information here. 
Sure, yep, we can send out the slides to everybody as well as a condensed version of all the links that are just on one page as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from people about any of the um, things people shared? Um, are there any privacy concerns that you guys can talk about um, as far as the um, the monitoring software and, and apps? Like, do you I think don't... there's a certain age that that it becomes a privacy issue? Um, the, uh, when you use it with uh, kids that are an older age, I would make sure you talk to your kids, have it like as, a, as an agreement in your contract that you make. Um, I know a lot of kids my age have problems with the tracking, but that has to come with the location tracking, but that should come as like, a mutual agreement and you just communicate with your kids. That's the most important thing. I would definitely encourage you even with um, younger kids, you know, to talk about um, the reasons um, why you're using the different monitoring software and um, the time limits and, you know, what, what the purpose is for them. Um, some of them are, um, you know, like easier to set up so that you can, it gives the kids a warning, you know, like, oh, you have three minutes of time left, you know, before your time is up. Whereas other ones, like my son has an Xbox and it, you know, the time limit um, cap cap capabilities for that just shut it off. So, um, you know, some of those things, you know, for kids who are really into gaming or things like that, you know, may be frustrating if it just shuts off in the middle of a game. So you might want to um, talk about those things so they know um, what's happening and uh, make sure that you um, have an agreement about why you're doing it and those kind of things. Good question. Any other questions from people? Um, do any of you have like contracts set up in your households that and if so how did you kind of respond or how did you work through that and if not how do you think you would respond to that i think kind of with the contracting agreement um my family kind of just has like little unwritten rules um that kind of just was a family like discussion um especially when i was in like high school a year ago but <laughs> um it was kind of just an agreement that it was really like we all came up with these rules together um and i th think a big part of like making those contracts is making sure that it's followed by like both parties so as well as like making a dinner table a technology free zone i think um especially teenagers respond to it more if it's by follow as well so making sure that like parents also try to respect that rule um and stuff like that thank you i can talk on that too i in my family, I've had technology since I was in probably sixth or seventh grade, but I wasn't allowed to have a cell phone until I was like a freshman or sophomore in high school. So before that, I just had an emergency phone if we were going someplace with a lot of people. So I didn't have a lot of like social media and things like that until I was much older. And then we have other things that we've discussed, like my social media is on private. So like my Instagram, nobody can see my Instagram that I don't allow them to. So it's all that everyone has to be approved, everything is private, so that even though I'm an 18 year old and technically an adult, I have these unwritten rules with my parents that we don't use technology at the dinner table, we don't spend too much time on our phones throughout the day, we have conversations in the morning and in the night, and that all of our social media we regulate so that not everyone in the world can see it all the time. I think also with social media, um, just having a conversation with your kids about how 
it plays a big influence, especially in like our generation about how um, everything that you post out there, it, it stays there and it, it can follow you. And um, talking about how like, don't post any, I know for me, like a big thing that I was always told is don't post anything that you want to want your future self to see or um, make sure that you're really like focusing on kind of like talking about um, like, cyberbullying and stuff like that because I mean that's it's a, a big thing especially on social media um, and talking about the importance of making sure that you report those and you block those accounts that you don't know um, and like Mara said uh, keeping your like accounts on private and just talking about like your rules that your family sets up and the importance of that especially in social media. So at first, I would do what uh, we, we've been doing as like a family, as us teams have been doing, where you set like a unwritten rules, like not on a piece of paper. But if the kid breaks a lot of those rules and you start losing, if there's like no mutual trust, that's when you do the written down ones if they uh, keep failing to do what you want them to do as, uh, as their parents. I feel like that's one of the best ways to do it. Thank you. Um, this is Gail Hart. I am a school social worker and I work with students um, trying to teach them uh, social skills and, and so forth. And one of the topics that I try to cover every year, um, sadly we didn't get to it this year, is you know how to keep themselves safe online and I know we were just touching on that you know some good some good tips but um, um, certainly it's important for you know families to be involved and set some boundaries and so forth some guidelines or some rules um, however I find that you know many of the families that I work with aren't aren't necessarily going to do that and so it's going to be up to the, the child or the teen um, I'm currently working with second through eighth graders. I have worked with high school also, but I'm not right now. But what other tips can you give as far as students being motivated on their own to take steps to keep themselves safe? I mean, I've tried to impress upon them, um, you know, some of the, the bad things that have happened when people have shared too much information that kept their things private or um, shared information, some, some real life stories um, from, that came from the Illinois Attorney General's office. But any other tips you can give me would sure be appreciated. Um, I would also talk about, everyone always talks about like your jobs are going to look on your social media. I know my boss has all of my social media like handles so he can look me up at any time and see what I'm posting and see what sort of things I'm putting out there because we're all part of the company and we all represent it but you also should talk about that schools are going to look at your social media my every college that i applied to asked for my social media handles and if you don't give them to them they're going to find you anyway it's very easy to just search your name up and then they can look through what you've posted and so if you want to get into like a nice school even like i'm going to uh, illinois state university and they wanted all my social media and then if you want to be in a sorority or a fraternity, they're all going to look at your social media. So don't post anything that you don't want to haunt you later on when you're trying to get your di diploma so that you can go get the job you want. This is going to stick with you forever and they're always going to want to see your social media. So it's just something to enforce that this won't just affect your jobs, it'll also affect your schooling. So Mara, um, that is wonderful information, and I'll be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've um, fortunately needed to look for a job. I used to teach others how to, but you're saying that employers can ask for all your social media accounts and even um, keep up, even if, even if your settings are not private, they can still see what you're posting? If you're on private, they can't see what you're posting, but there's a lot of, like, my boss, he follows me so that he can see what I'm posting, even though my account's on private, because 
he wants to know that even like my friends, because I work for um, the city of East Peoria, I work at Eastside Center. So okay. the people that see my posts, like my friends and stuff, are customers of his business. So he wants to know that what I'm posting and like what I'm doing isn't affecting how my friends see the business. We also had to sign a contract that we won't post while we're at work. So that's another thing where it's, he has to see my social media so that he knows that I'm following the contract. So it was part of that contract that he can see what I'm posting. Wow. Okay. That's really interesting. I'm guessing there are probably still a lot of employers who don't um, do this. It probably depends on the type of job that you have and the level of employment, but that is very good to know. Thank you. Uh, so to go along with that, um, I worked at Caterpillar uh, this school year, but they, they didn't ask to follow my social media, but they did have like in the contract that if they hear about what's on my social media, I could get fired. And there's a lot of examples that on the internet, I think like just yesterday there was a tweet, um, there's a hashtag that was trending about a person who got fired because of something that came onto the internet. Um, there's a question that from the chat box where it says, uh, what age did you start your social media experience? Uh, is there an appropriate age? So I, I think I started around high school and maybe a little bit younger than that. Um, for the younger dinner, for the kids younger than me, they usually start a little younger. Um, I would say it really depends on their maturity and what you think they'll post on their net. Um, I would keep a Snapchat away until they're a little older because you can't really monitor Snapchat. I would also look at the companies themselves, what age limits they've put out, and don't let your kids like lie about their age that they can get on Facebook early. I think Facebook is like 13. You can't get on before you're 13. So I would really look at what the companies themselves have suggested because a lot of these social media apps, if you look on the app store, they are rated like teen, which would be 13 to and up. So I would look a lot at that and then make sure that they're old enough to understand that everything that they post out there is permanent. Like there's websites where you can go and look at what a website looked at 10 years ago. So everything is going to be out there forever. There's no escaping it. So I would really wait until they can really fathom that everything is permanent out there. Kind of going what um, Paul said too, like, and if they are like reaching that age, kind of like 13, right when you get um, to like the teen age, it seems like everyone's getting social media. Um, I would maybe start off with those apps that are probably easier to monitor, such as like um, Mara said, like, I think Facebook is 13 also, and like Instagram, um, you can make sure that those accounts are on private uh, versus something like Snapchat, which is not very easy to control because of um, their features in it. I definitely think um, that one of the reasons um, that we did the 4-H Tech Changemaker program is um, because the teens are a great role model for the kids and they look up to them. So if you have um, teens in your school or if you want some of the um, Tech Changemakers to talk to your students, I think definitely hearing it from a teenager um, who you know, is closer to their age and has, you know, lived um, closer to the, um, the realm of this social media. You know, we didn't have the same experiences they did. So I think sometimes um, kids feel like we can't understand what it's like to be the one kid who doesn't have um, social media access at a younger age. But if um, the teens are talking to them, sometimes it's a little bit easier for them to relate um, and um, hopefully they'll um, pay a little bit more attention. So I definitely would encourage you to engage um, either teens at your school that you know that are um, engaged in this type of thing and doing some proper um, media um, skills or um, engaging Great questions. Any other um, questions um, from anybody that's hasn't asked yet? I 
I have already asked, and I'm sorry, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. Are there um, tech change maker? Are there several clubs? Are there, I mean, are they throughout all the 4-H clubs? Are there any in Peoria that you know, know of? So the, um, there are about six teams in this area that are, um, they're all helping with the Fulton Peoria Mason Taswell program. Um, so like the teams that are on the call today, Paul and Mara are technically from Taswell County, although they have programs in all our areas and Kate is um, in Peoria County. Um, so we um, have teams that could do programs in any of those four counties. It was a pilot program this year and there were, um, I think 10 counties across the state who did it and they're gonna expand it in the fall. Um, so there should be teens in a lot of locations that could do it, um, but there are definitely teens in Peoria. Thank you. I might actually um, inquire about having one of them speak to my students when we're able to do that. Yeah, sure, that would be great. Okay, looks like we have one more question in the chat. Um, what tips do you have regarding safety and privacy of GPS location information? I would say make sure that um, whatever apps you are using to make sure that they are trustworthy apps. Um, I know a lot of apps sometimes they ask to share your location, um, making sure that it is like, I know I believe Snapchat, one of the recent features is that you can share your location on like the Snap map and then your friends that have you on Snapchat can see it. Um, maybe talk about uh, sharing your location with certain apps versus um, kind of like, if you're talking about like the parental controls sharing apps, um, there are different ones that I believe that Paul talked about in the presentation um, that do like the kind of geo uh, fencing. There's different options for that where um, you can always have your kids location on and have it through those apps um, or you can just get those alerts um, about certain areas. Um, I know he talked about geo fencing and that one um, is kind of more about just kind of a radius that if you set your kids around. So like if you, if your kid's going to a friend's house, you can see if they leave like a certain area, like you could put it around the area of their house. And if they leave that, then you know that they're not exactly going to their friend's house. Um, but there are different options for that. But I would just, the major thing is just make sure that the apps you are using and sharing your location with are those trustworthy apps. Great. Well, any other questions or Amy, is there anything else um, you wanted to share with everyone? Um, no, I don't think I have anything else, although we have another program um, next week with the, uh, the 4-H tech change makers um, talking about um, ways to keep social during social distancing. And so um, just, just to let you all know, if you'd be interested in coming back, it's same time uh, next week. Right, exactly. And there are other topics that um, the teens can talk on. When we were doing things face-to-face, -face, they, they can help um, people with um, their um, devices. So talking about like, you know, how do you use your smartphone, how to use your Kindle, that kind of stuff. That's a little harder to do. Um, virtually, um, but it's still a possibility. But there are also um, topics on um, internet safety, like using passwords, shopping online, um, those kind of things as well, more for adult audiences um, than kids. Although I guess if kids are shopping online, they might wanna know that too. Um, so if you have topics that you are interested in, um, you can put them in the chat or just um, email Amy or I as well, and um, we can see if that's one of the topics that they can cover, um, and we'd be happy to do that as well. 
Thank you everybody for participating. And Amy, thank you for um, doing this partnership. I think it worked um, pretty well the, for, for the first time. And so thank you for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so um, great to meet all of your, uh, your tech change makers there. Hi, Kate. I, I've met you before. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we should probably connect at some point, Kate, and talk about um, that we had a program on the books for July and we'll have to, it's still kind of up in the air whether we'll be able to do that or not, but yeah, I hope we can, but me too. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> it's a kind of a week by week thing here. For sure. Same here. Well, thanks again, everybody for being on and um, stay well, everyone. And I'll send out the links and the presentation as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.